Hey guys, it's Sailor, and today in this video I'm doing part three of She Is Not Invisible by Marcus Sedwick. If you haven't seen part one or two, click the link in the description to see Hermione or Katniss or both. <laughs> so, this last part of the book was so suspenseful. Anyway, <laughs> Laura and Ben are no closer to finding their dad than they were at the beginning of the book until they received this email from Michael Walker asking them to meet him at his school, public school 354. Four. Four. So, as they're traveling there, they're being stalked by this mysterious guy who smells like smoke. And as they're in the taxi, <clears throat> they are seeing, they are on the news, and they're all over the news, everywhere. So that makes them panic a bit. But then, they arrive at their destination, and they realize that they've been stalked by this man, and he's harassing them and asking them wh what the combination to the safe in the hotel room that he claims his, that has diamonds and gold in it, but they had no idea that existed. So, after they are rescued by Michael's brother, they travel back to their hotel room and try frantically to unlock the safe. And then, as they're unlocking it, they realize that the guy who is stalking them's friend is coming into the hotel. And so Lorith daringly stays in the hotel room and tells Ben to go smash all the lights because she wants the criminal to be at sort of the same level as her so since she can't see, she doesn't think he should be able to see. So, after the lights are all smashed, he um, Ben goes and hides while the criminal, who does not have a name, comes in and comes in and chases Laura. And this is very suspenseful. So, as he's chasing her, she doesn't know what's happening really because she can't see. Oh yeah, also, this book is really interesting because it's not told by uh, physical appearance it, appearances. It's mostly sounds and smells and emo emotional and feelings. It's very good. I like the writing style. So, anyway, let's not get sidetracked. So, Lorith is chased into the hallway, and since there are no lights, sh the man ends up tripping down the stairs, but Lorith is still absolutely terrified because she thinks he's going to come up after her. And she runs to the bottom of the stairs and finds her dad is there waiting for her with her little brother, Ben. So once they are reunited, she is super happy and the guy gets arrested and all is well. And their mom comes and joins them and is surprisingly not mad whatsoever. I really enjoyed how this was told by the point of view of a blind person because it really made me wonder what it would be like if I couldn't see. Also, I like how it's sort of two stories at once because I don't think we mentioned this in the book report, but um, part, most of it is Laura's story, but then some of it is her dad's journal and what he's been writing about. So we do get to know a bit more about the dad through his writings, which I think is a really interesting way to describe him as opposed to, oh, well, he was very amazing, but they described him through going through his journals. I really liked how the dad's journals were a complete, sort of complete different story, but they intertwined with the book in many ways. And it was also a mini essay on the philosophy of coincidences. Speaking of coincidence, says while I was reading this book with the number 354, 354 kept popping up everywhere. Seriously, I woke up in the middle of the night and looked at the clock. It was 354, and I didn't look at that clock for the rest of the day, and you'll never guess what time it was. 354, the next day. Dun, dun, dun. Another strange coincidence that happened to me while I was reading this book is I started out reading this on Kindle. And then when the hard copy finally arrived, I just opened up the book and I was on the exact page I left off on. 
it was so interesting. I really enjoyed how Sedwick made um, the protagonist blind because you don't see that very often in books. And overall, I just feel this was definitely in my top 10 favorite books. See you soon. Bye! By the way, the item that was in the safe that the criminals thought they desperately wanted was an idea for the new book their dad was about to write. And they must have overheard him over the phone telling one of his friends, the idea is diamonds and gold, my friend. Diamonds and gold.